Here we'll be back talking about the same thing. Okay, we'll see what happens. But Mungatana, let's switch topics now and talk about the doctor's strike. Yes. You're being unreasonable, Ruto tells doctors. Mm -hmm. Who is being unreasonable between the government and the union officials? Because the government says they should go back to work. The union mm -hmm. officials say they're not going to work until there's a return to work formula. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me just throw my thoughts around that statement by the head of state. Uh, and, and I want you to see for what it is. And I, I always like to talk about what is happening in my county. My county, doctors are on strike. The neighboring county, Lamo, doctors are not on strike. Why? Because my neighbor governor, uh, Isatimami, sat with doctors. He realized I'm the employer. He realized there were issues that were negotiated some time ago. He realized doctors need money to go on leave, uh, pay, paid leave to improve their studies, facilities within the county and, and stuff like that. He realized there are things that need to be done to make the work of a doctor in Lamu County better. And um, uh, he started implementing as the employer, you see? using the same uh, 2017 uh, collective bargaining agreement. Now, come to our county. Our county, our governor has been no sure. He has never even issued a statement about the issues that are surrounding the workers. So our people in Tana River County, the referral hospital, people are really suffering. Uh, patients are dying. And there is no end to the suffering that the people are happening. So I'm talking about what is happening in my county. And the, the point I'm underlying is that there are two levels of employers here. There's the county governor, and then there is the national government, because the national referral hospitals, like uh, here in Kenyatta National, those ones are, are employed by the national government. Now, some of the issues that they were raising uh, according to the minister whom we hosted in the Senate yesterday, who are like, uh, you know, arrears of payment for interns, which is general for everyone. Now, they have posted them, they have gotten the, the, the money for, for, for that, and they have effected it. And she even told us she has, they are waiting for the letter from the Ministry in Treasury for the 267 million to deal now with the, the other cadres. Now, what, what I'm saying, be reasonable. Who is not being reasonable? I'm trying to answer your question. I, I will say that the, the blame is shared. There are those, the governors, some of them are being unreasonable because they have not acted on any of those agreements at that level. At the national level, again, there are, uh, the, the, there are state officials who have also sat and not tried to implement. Now, I would want to suggest this. You know, I've been around in, uh, in government. I've served in many ministries in my past life, and I know how government works. Whenever an issue is, is an issue of budget, then patience need to be exercised. Even if the president today says this must be done, if it is a matter of change of behavior, that is different. But if it's a matter involving budget, patients must be employed. So if, if it's a matter of uh, budget, and then I come, you know, Trevor, if you came to me and told me, you must pay my money, and I tell you, I'm willing to pay, but I don't have the money. You know, it's different from someone who tells you, I won't pay you and I don't care, okay? There's a difference. And any business person, I like, I like people to think of government as a corporation. Because if it is my business, if it's my company, and, and uh, I, I'm asking for money for services rendered, and uh, the law firm is demanding the legal fee, uh, this is my law firm, and then you come and tell me, I don't care and I won't pay, I'll take you to court. But if you tell me, look, uh, you ask for 500,000, in sincerity, I agreed at that time because I didn't have an option. Uh, we were in court and I was going to be jailed and what I needed your services. But sincerely, I can only do 200,000 and I need installments. Still, I would listen to you. Okay. I will be reasonable. And so if you're looking at it from 
a business mind, yeah. from a corporation mind, and it is your work, you would want to say mm. that there must be the test of reasonability across, across board, board, on both sides. Okay. And I also want to say this. When we were finishing universities in our days, yeah, people used to be, you know, you are waiting for your letter to join the, the state council. The state council, the, the prosecutors were just being taken, okay? Um, then things changed, you see? Uh, you no longer, you don't wait for your posting to be a magistrate or, and, and stuff like that. It's same for engineers, same for teachers. For doctors, it has remained that they are strictly absorbed, absorbed, absorbed. I want to also invite, you know, reasonability around that area. Mm -hmm. If other professions are not guaranteed jobs, and we all have to hustle now, there was a time when we were all guaranteed jobs. Yeah. And then things have changed. I think it is also time that uh, even the medical uh, field, uh, where my brother, my brother works there, you know, a very good doctor, a very qualified, even teachers at the university. But there's a time that we have to accept yeah. things are changing, Trevor, things are changing. Okay. And then and, and, and the, the, the medical field must adjust. They must come and join the hustle like the rest of us. Nowadays, I see even uh, advocates in our practice, in our, in our, in our, in our in current lawyers who are coming, they, they put their within our, uh, our, our various WhatsApp groups saying, look, I, I am able to do this work here and there and there. If you have a brief and yeah. you can't attend, come and uh, you know, send the work to me. People are hustling. All right. Nobody is, is going to force the government to employ them or force employers. Yeah. Things are changing and we must have that conversation. Okay. And we must have that conversation about uh, reasonability. All right. That's and, what I say. So, so see, that's exactly what Mungatana is saying is what should be contained in a return to work formula whereby the government should just sit down with the doctors and tell them this is what we have for now, this is how we intend to play the balance going forward. But we're seeing a situation where both sides are not willing to budge. There's also conditions. So who's being unreasonable here? Well, uh, also there's a court order telling the doctors to go back to work. Well, well uh, when I want to say that uh, our people are suffering. We have people who are dying. In my own county, uh, all the doctors are on strike and uh, patients are really suffering. But then uh, the question is, who is to blame? I think the government is trivializing the whole matter. I listened to the president yesterday talk, trying to say that the doctors are unreasonable, but I think the government is uh, unreasonable. It's more unreasonable than, than, the, the, than the doctors. And these are the reasons. You see, the government spends about 1.5 billion shillings every year to train doctors. And uh, these doctors, the process of training a doctor is very expensive. And these doctors, be, after they have gone through the six-year course, they now become interns. If you go to hospitals, these people called interns are not just interns. They are working. They are the ones who run hospitals, actually. They're the ones who run the hospitals. So when we talk about 70,000 shillings being paid to people who are working longer hours, because the uh, doctor to patient ratio in Kenya is uh, almost uh, one to 6,000 people. So we have people who are working so hard day and night to uh, manage patients, and then you are paying them 7,000? That's too low. So when the president says these people are unreasonable, I think something is amiss. And the same, same president was part of the process that came up with the CBA that uh, said that doctors must be paid, I don't know, 209,000. I think he needs to go back, recollect what led them to make that decision. So uh, I, I, I completely uh, disagree with him and say that yes, the problem must be resolved and he must lead the way. Because so far, since until yesterday, is when we heard about the president trying to talk about this issue. He has been quiet all through and left uh, his uh, officers to deal with the problem. So he needs to lead from the front and genuinely address this problem. Number two, 
reason why I believe is unreasonable is that uh, uh, I and uh, my colleague here, Mungatana, our role under the Constitution is uh, basically um, primarily um, and is influenced by Article 96 of the Constitution, which is to protect devolution. You cannot, you cannot say people are being unreasonable when you are heading a government that understands that 80% of health is devolved. But there is nothing to show for it because all the funds are still held in Nairobi. Over 85% of the money in the health docket are at the Ministry of Health. Release this money to counties, let the counties organize themselves and pay doctors better. And I think that's where the main problem is, that we must ask ourselves, how do we deal with this problem of health? If we have said health is a devolved function, then let's give counties money to manage health. And if we do not want, then let's go back to the people, change the constitution, and say, let us take back health to Nairobi. And, uh, and uh, maybe that will be the solution to this problem. Because we cannot keep on saying, governors, this is your problem, deal with it. And we don't give them sufficient money. I know we have challenges in our counties, corruption, governance issues. But let us give them the money they need. And if they fail, then we will know that these people have failed. We take back the money to, to Nairobi. And this is happening not just in health agriculture and other ways. And the, I think early this year, we saw a major press conference where the government said by February this year, all functions will be transferred to counties. Now it is several months, nothing has been transferred. In the Kenya Kwanza Manifesto, they talked about six months of their taking over government they transfer all the services, all the functions, and the money to counties. That has never happened. So we have a bigger elephant in the house that must be addressed. Yes. So that if we have reasonable governors, like uh, the way Mwishimi uh, Mangatana said, Lamu, then they will sit in there with the money they have and uh, agree with the doctors that we'll be able to deal with this problem. We have a situation where doctors' salaries are delayed. And that they are working in the counties. How, how do you expect them to operate? Okay. So I think we must be reasonable, as he says, uh, but also identify the real issues of this problem. Okay. The doctor strike is not uh, foreign to this country alone. The past six months, we have had a doctor strike in Mozambique. We have had a doctor strike in uh, Nigeria. We have had a doctor strike in South Africa. And recently, you saw the young doctors also striking in the UK because these people go through a very rigorous training process. I have a, a, a student who is training a, a doctor in my house, and I know what they go through. It is a rigorous process. You spend six years doing the training, and then after that, you another two years of internship. And you are saying, why should we pay in turns 70,000? Go walk into every hospital and see what those young people go through. They are basically doing the job. They are not learning. They are doing the job. So even 70,000 is too little money for them. Okay. So let's, uh, let us be reasonable and look at this problem holistically. All right. And we'll be able to address okay. uh, the problem where it is. Mukunji? Yes. Um, Trevor, let me say that um, first, I feel for our population, and um, I have come first hand uh, with the experience that uh, our population is actually uh, getting when it, 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 it wants to get some healthcare services from the public hospitals. And um, I believe this issue is an issue that should not be looked at in one side. One of the things that I've always been complaining about is the fact that I, I feel like our doctors are actually not on strike because uh, many of them have 
pri private practices and they are doing it in private hospitals, they are continuing with their work. So there is work that they are doing. But th I feel also like there is a deliberate uh, uh, experiment on whether we should do away with public hospitals. Because uh, this profession, we really need to look at how we are going to move forward with the issues of our healthcare in this country. Most of our level five hospitals can offer zero services. That's why you find KNH and uh, KU hospital and other uh, level six and seven hospitals uh, being overwhelmed uh, with the issues to do with the service. And I want to say that, yes, I agree with, uh, with uh, my good friend here that we cannot pay doctors enough. It is not possible. But I believe this is one of those professions that you take and you know you have taken the lives of people at hand. So there is a need to also be open-minded. And whatever is uh, required on the CBA is not something that can be achieved uh, with a blink of an eye. It is not possible. So I believe and I stand uh, to be corrected that we need to have to define clearly what we would call a strike for doctors. We should not allow paralysis of our hospitals in the name of strikes. There should be a clear guidance on how emergency services, uh, specialized services, and other services can continue being offered by doctors while they are still demanding their right and they should be heard. I also don't agree uh, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the stand that uh, you stay there and I stay here. There should be that conversation and there is a need to get into a solution as quick as possible. I want to believe that nobody should be happy when our people are dying. But I need also to say that there is a need to regulate this sector in a way that when you are a public doctor and you are agreeing to be paid this amount of money, let it not be that in the next door, uh, the next uh, plot, you have a clinic that you are running. So our healthcare system remains amorphous and is actually a cartel of sort that takes people from the public uh, hospitals, takes them to private practice for the benefit of uh, uh, very few. So there is a need to look at these things. Yeah. And actually, I agree that nobody should be should be should be st should stand like there is no lives that are being lost. So at it, this point, everyone is on the wrong. Everybody is on the wrong. Okay, I agree. With the, okay. With but, but I wanted to to just say something about what my honourable colleague has said that the president should lead uh, from the front. I wanted to assure you. For those who have worked with uh, the president for some time, uh, like I, I have uh, had the opportunity, if you study this president, when it comes to matters to do with money, when it comes to matters to do with, you know, funds, this president, you will not rush him. Ruto is a very strategic thinker when it comes to money issues. That is why on this one, Dr. Strike, he has not jumped up and down like previous uh, administration who would sit down as you must do. If you don't do, if you've seen those clips all over, if you don't do doctors, we're going to fire you. That's not true, though. Mm. When it comes to matters budget, he's a very strategic thinker. And you will not rush him. And even his reaction right now, so far, he, it's been very measured, you know. Uh, let's think about it. Let's give it time. Let's be reasonable. Let's, you know, very, when very measured. Those who support doctors. No, I, I want, I want to, I want to finish on this one. I'm trying to answer that. Is he keeping quiet? He is working behind the the enemy very much behind the the curtains very much, and because it's a complex issue, you don't rush up and start giving directives, because that's not how it works with this one. And if you want to start understanding this president, when it comes to matters money, you remember it was very populistic. When, when it was a popular thing to do when we took over in this administration, that let us continue 
to subsidize consumption. Oh, let's let's uh, pay for the monies for 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 petroleum. Let he said no, no. Let's take the beating, but let us subsidize production, and it ended up. Uh, huge payoffs in terms of like fertilizers now, you know, it paid off. The production uh, was increased because the production was subsidized. This is the kind of president we are dealing with. So I, I, I want to uh, say even here without fear of contradiction that um, uh, that, that uh, criticism is, uh, uh, you know, misplaced because this guy really is, is, is heads on and he's hands on, I want to say. And the, the, my colleague has also said he was part of the CBA that was signed. I want Kenyans listening to me. That CBA was signed one month to the general election. And the people who the president and the deputy president at that time, you know, they were in the election mood. And, uh, you know, uh, previous president would do anything to make sure that uh, people support him. That's the wrong time to even do any form of But the bottom line is it was signed uh, and deposited. True, it. true. So it but in law, document. in law, in law, there are, there are contracts that are called uh, contracts obtained under duress, you know. There, there are contracts that are called unconscionable. And uh, sometimes if people are put under certain situations, they behave in, especially politicians, they would behave in a certain manner that is not reasonable, you know. So I'm saying this matter is complex. Yeah. I'm saying the doctors have a case. I'm saying the government has an issue, you know, a, a case. So let us go slowly and meet at some point. I, I really am for the idea that we should have conciliation and to show this government is very serious. None other than the head of public service in the whole of government approach has been sitting in these meetings. So let us, let us just go slowly. We agree there's an issue, but let us take everyone into consideration, including our people who are suffering. And I think the court has given one way forward. Let us re release some doctors, not all of you. They're not saying return to work by force. They're just saying, look, as the negotiations for the 2024-2025 CBA is going on, release this number of doctors back into, into referral hospitals, into whatever, so that some, some emergencies are, are, are done. No. And I think this approach would help uh, us resolve. Nobody says it's an easy decision. Yeah. And we should, the last thing we should do as politicians is to politicize it. Tuombe mungu tu kwamba somewhere our doctors and the, the Council of Governors and the national government, the employers, we reach an agreement. Okay, let's move on topics and now talk about the Bunge Towers. And I'll start with Mukunji on this. First of all, has any of you moved in there? <laughs> no, I've not moved in. Okay. Uh, uh, I believe I've already, I already have an office. Uh, I have not checked it yet. Okay. Yes. But are you and, concerned and, and that uh, you took four? Let me say that, uh, Trevor, you, you saw the instructions by the speaker. <laughs> <laughs> that I might find myself into the, <laughs> the powers and privilege committee. Yeah. But I would say that um, it, uh, it, uh, I believe many members have, uh, have not had offices. And I'm told uh, almost 58 members have moved in. Mm -hmm. So to me, I expect uh, the president is opening the tower on Friday. So we, we just need to see, need to see how uh, the place is, and I believe it's a, it's a, it's a, good, it's a good place. Okay. I, I, don't, I have not checked it, yeah. but I believe it's a good, it's a good office. Okay. Yeah. I see how careful you are with that response. <laughs> <laughs> this is something that has taken a record 14 years. The price has almost doubled. Is this a scandal Kenyans are seeing right in front of parliamentarians? Uh, well, uh, I think there are several issues to this uh, matter. There is an issue of uh, the length of time it is taken to complete, and uh, that is a concern to everyone. There is the issue of the, the additional resources that have been put in to, to, to finish this building. And then there is also the issue of uh, the appropriateness or suitability of the offices. Uh, I, I want to join those who are concerned about the length of time and about the billions of money, extra billions that have been put in. I think it's, 
uh, is a genuine concern. Uh, and I think uh, Parliament being an oversight institution, uh, I, I think it, it, it is important for Parliament to demonstrate that uh, they can confront issues, uh, oversight issues, even within its own mm -hmm. environment. Mm -hmm. So I will be uh, very interested to see how uh, we are going to navigate this matter as yeah. an oversight institution to ask genuine questions on the issue of length of time, yeah. on the issue of, uh, of our expenditure. But what but, do you suggest? Because this is something that the speaker himself has somehow threatened members of parliament that anyone who makes any allegation will find themselves in front of the powers and privileges committee. How do the oversighters oversight themselves? No, I, I think the speaker, I, I think, is out of context because uh, Parliament is a, an institution that exercises freedom of speech. Uh, members are free to, to say uh, anything on the floor of the House without intimidation. On, on that bit, I disagree with the speaker. But I was trying to say that there are genuine questions to be answered. Uh, the Parliamentary Service Commission, the institution that uh, is charged uh, with uh, that project, has uh, questions to answer. That uh, I agree. But on the suitability of the office, uh, I think uh, I went to see the office that I had been allocated. So at least you've been allocated one? Yes, I went to see the office that I've been allocated, and you know I'm the chair of uh, PIC in the Senate. And uh, I have a beautiful office. I have an office, I have a secretarial room, uh, bigger than the KICC one, and I have a, board, a committee boardroom bigger than the one you use in KICC. And I have a bigger waiting area for uh, people who are coming to the committee. So me, I'm happy. And uh, I went there and uh, I saw that there were some final touches. So and I actually okay. asked yeah. them to speed up because I want to get in. So for me, I have no issues uh, on the suitability of uh, the office. Uh, but we have concerns about the cost and the duration, project time that has taken all these years, nine years later, it's not, it's not worthy compared to other buildings which have come up recently, like the CBK building that was finished in a record time and almost half the amount that this one has consumed. So there are genuine uh, concerns, but uh, I want to encourage members to, to get into that building because Parliament is spending a lot of money uh, hiring uh, offices, KICC, uh, I don't know where, Cross. But uh, many been, other places. Yeah, But uh, has, has this been probed in any way? Is it even a conversation being had within the pressings of Parliament? I mean, this is the beginning. When people raise questions, I expect the relevant committees to pick up and summon uh, the relevant people to appear before it and uh, respond to these concerns. And that's why I said earlier that we'll be watching to see how Parliament oversights itself okay. on this very important matter. All right. Mungadana, what do you recommend when the oversighters themselves are supposed to oversight themselves? You know, in the report of uh, the Auditor General 2019-2020, Nancy Gathongo raised a red flag and said, the time that is being taken for execution of this contract is much, much longer than anticipated. So he said there's going to be occasioned as a result of this loss of public funds. This, uh, this whole process of building this thing started, started in 2010. Now we are in 2024. Uh, 20. That's where we want to. So we are talking over 13 years. The original contract was supposed to be 6.1. Uh, billion, uh, sorry, sorry 5.9 billion, and then now we are ending up paying around 9 billion to occupy the building. So um, I, I have been there, I have been there, and um, I went to check my office, and it's an improvement from where we are at KICC. Uh, one of the things that has concerned me about KICC is that there was a lot of money that the Parliamentary Service Commission was paying 
to the Kenyatta International Conference Center. And yet, we have the Bunge Tower. So <laughs> we, we are renting, and yet we have our own house. Uh, you get, and the, the costs were not making sense. So what is my, my recommendation? There are lots of questions. Even uh, the Auditor General has, has raised those questions. Honorable members have raised those questions. I think uh, the, the, the Public Accounts Committees uh, should have a joint sitting to discuss what are the issues, to, to look at those records and uh, get into the matters if they were inappropriate, uh, you know, appropriations, uh, they must be dealt with. Mm -hmm. But to cut the losses, you know, people should move into, uh, into, the, into the house, uh, into the new, the new offices. I am of that opinion. Why? Because it's unreasonable to have a house <laughs> and then you are paying rent. You wouldn't do that. You know, every time I keep telling people, come to do it if it is your own house, if it is your own money you are spending. You would never do that. In fact, if it is your own house, you fix fix something reasonable and you tell your children, let us shift to where we are building. It's not very nice, it's whatever, but everybody, uh, let's squeeze as we continue because now you are saving on the rent. So this is where I'm coming from. And I, I wanted to say this, even for, other big office holders, you would find there's a big building for the governor of Central Bank, the Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya, the Speaker of the, of the, of the Senate, the Speaker of the National Assembly. <laughs> the buildings are there, people are not occupying them, you know, and they're being paid. You know, there's, there's a need for, for us to, to ask ourselves, if these are my funds, my, pub, my money, would I do that? Would there, be, uh, you, would there be a speaker's house, official residence, and then it's empty, lying in disuse, therefore going into waste, and then I'm renting. Yeah, and this comes you, back would, to those would, would do, we were talking about. Would I do it if it is my money? I wouldn't, so I'm saying, in this one for Bunge Tower, whatever the questions that are there, and they are questions, the processes must be followed. But to cut our losses, let us not rent when we have a place we can occupy and improve as we go. That's my, that's my humble opinion. Yeah, Mukunji is in this part of the austerity measures we were talking about, because you continue to rent offices elsewhere, the budget allocation, which still comes through parliament, and you continue to approve it even though there are questions to it. Is it, shouldn't now Kenyans just put this blame at the doorstep of parliament? Actually, I, I fully agree with you because, uh, yeah, we, we need to cut down on, on uh, rents. And uh, it is, it's not only uh, National Assembly or Senate, but also with government. There is a need to see and clearly cut down on cost we are doing on rent. I've seen some organizations renting the whole of prism towers. Imagine. Uh, I mean, and we have offices, we have government buildings that Imagine. are around. I believe it is one of the issues where we can really strike. And it's a low-hanging fruit to reduce on the cost of, uh, of, uh, of uh, operation. And I agree with my uh, good friends here that the, 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 it is questionable the amount of time that uh, the Bunge Towers has taken to, 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 com to, to, be, to be completed. But I want to loud uh, the speaker. Uh, that it is during his uh, time that this uh, has come to to the finish line. So it's something also to be proud of. Mm -hmm. And I believe uh, members should embrace the building. It is not right to always uh, have public places. Yeah. Then we decide to remain uh, on rentals, which is actually costing our taxpayers. And, okay. uh, that is a serious uh, we, matter. We will see what happens we, when the oversighters are supposed to oversight themselves. We'll keep an eye on that. But we we'll do Kenyans a disservice if we didn't talk about the current issue, which is floods. Yes. And I think Ugatana, we should start us off with this because Tana River is one of the places that is most likely going to be affected. What is the lasting solution to this? Government keeps telling people <coughs> that move to higher ground. They don't own land in that higher ground that you ask them to move to. So what is the lasting solution? For me, uh, we need serious investment in uh, water management systems in Tana River County. And I would say the same for the area of Budalangi and other places. The, the problem is that uh, some of these areas uh, uh, have not had, you know, the benefit of, say, 
uh, having a president or having a minister for finance sitting in their offices, therefore being able to see the problems that are on the ground as they should see them. You see, you, you, most of the presidents that we have had have come from the highlands. They, they have not really experienced uh, what it means to have flooding. We who are coming from there, like today, if we had a president or a minister for finance who comes from those flood prone areas, they would approach this issue from a very different angle. And I, I, I want to say this, <coughs> that uh, we need to invest in Tana River County. We need to invest in Tana River. And I remember our president, when we were dealing with uh, the campaigns, he said, we, we, we must have a, a grand plan for the entire Tana River County. And talking to him, uh, he, he said that uh, there are massive plans for investment in terms of uh, uh, water and irrigation systems. Because there's a lot of water, but we are not capturing it. And then there's a lot of trout. And just a few months later, you have no water again, and there's a lot of water. Now, uh, so, the lasting solution to come to your, to your answer is that we must have massive investments in irrigation and water management system. And uh, uh, recently when we, we, we were discussing this issue, because I, I, I had a chance to, to, to discuss some of these issues concerning the county, he mentioned about the high, fall, uh, high, fall, high Grand Falls plan that uh, the British government had signed with Kenya. And it was focusing basically on the management of River Tana. There's supposed to be a very huge investment, billions of dollars, millions of pounds, UK pounds. And the commitments were made, but they are not making a move. And it was his word that um, we thought these people were going to make a move, but they are taking too long. So we need to rethink. Mm -hmm. So in terms of um, a way forward, yeah. It is massive investment in water management systems. Okay. And this issue was also repeated. Uh, the Honorable uh, Kindiki, uh, Minister for Interior, he visited the Kiambere area uh, where there are dams there. And one of the things he mentioned is also a possible long-lasting solution. Mm. Aside from how uh, the, the president is thinking about huge other new investments, Kindiki has also proposed that there is a possibility of raising the existing dams, okay? If these dams that are existing are raised, then uh, <coughs> water will not go and overflow, over, have a spillover yeah. uh, uh, over Kiambere, and then it comes to destroy our farms uh, and our livelihoods. In the, in the delta, down at the delta when they're joining the sea. So we have those kind of thoughts. Yeah. The thing is, is it in the budget? So far, we have not seen anything, and we need to push it. The only good news about this other plan that the president was talking about is that it was an investment that was outside the, the, uh, it, it, outside the budget. Yeah. It was uh, people coming to invest, uh, not uh, you know, because we, we didn't have money to, to put in the budget for that kind of monies that are required. Okay. However, if the walls are raised, yeah. then we control the waters. Okay. If there are new investment to create huge dams in, uh, to control the river, then we have a permanent solution. Okay. So in terms of a permanent solution, that's the way That's it. Go. Osozi? Well, uh, solution to this as we wind up. Well, uh, I think this problem is similar to the one we looked at of wage bill, where we talk about these things and uh, this problem continues year in, year out, uh, because this is not the first time we are experiencing fl floods. They have been there. But uh, every time we experience floods, uh, people die, uh, people are displaced, and we talk about solutions. And then uh, a few months later, we are now talking about drought, where animals are dying, where people are dying of hunger. So I think it's a cyclic problem, which uh, uh, obviously the government has not come up with the long-term sustainable measures on how to deal with it. Uh, whereas I agree 
that uh, part of this problem is uh, challenges around uh, climate change uh, because we have seen even uh, countries with better drainage system, better uh, flooding management systems are experiencing floods. I saw something on the internet about Dubai being underwater. So uh, really, uh, we must also look at it from the context of uh, uh, the effects of climate change. Uh, but again, uh, coming back to my earlier point about uh, inability to deal with this problem, yeah. I, I wonder why we have some of these institutions which are supposed to help in this, and they're not doing anything. We have the National Irrigation Authority. What are they doing? We have uh, Water Harvesting Authority, which uh, recently in the amended Water uh, Act, they have now been uh, categorized as a water service provider to provide waters. What do they do? Where do they take uh, the money that we appropriate to them? Because we don't fill them. I mean, the idea behind them was that when we have excess water, they have a system of how they can, this water can be stored and used during droughts. But that is not happening. Right now we have a lot of rains in uh, Tana River. We have a lot of rains in uh, Garissa, Mandera. But uh, a few months from now, be you'll drought. be hearing that uh, there are droughts, uh, animals are dying because there is no water, there is no pasture. Okay. I mean, what is happening? We All have right. an uh, institution called Drought Mo Monitoring Authority, uh, Drought Management Authority. What do they do? You see, these are the kind of things that uh, we <coughs> must face yeah. and uh, deal with because we cannot be sustaining institutions yeah. which are not serving Kenyans, okay. which are not addressing the, the real problems or around drought and around uh, flooding. Okay. So that is, a, that is a problem. Mukunji, final word on this. Yes. Um, I, I think uh, I first want to say that... Um, this is actually a disaster in waiting. And uh, I come from Membu, where we have the, the Seven Fox Dam. And uh, one of the dams, Masinga, uh, which uh, I saw uh, 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 the minister, C.S. Kindiki, uh, mentioning as one of those dams that can break uh, the bank. I believe there is a need to actually uh, put resources for evacuation and also ensure that the short-term solutions of ensuring we, we don't risk people's life is well handled. But um, I have also seen uh, this is an issue of climate change yeah. and also climate interruption. We, we, as, as we have seen in Dubai and other places uh, that do even issues to do with cloud seeding so they can get rain, we have seen the levels of rain, uh, the millimeters of rain that they are receiving is, is crazy. And, um, I saw somebody criticizing your good friend uh, Larry that he should uh, have seen Dubai before he mentioned uh, JKIA <laughs> on the issue of, uh, <laughs> of floods. Yeah. But I won't say that uh, it is the right time to have a conversation on how to once and for all get prepared on issues of flood. And I was also want to take toll and uh, ask, put to task uh, some of the organizations that are supposed to be handling this. Among them, uh, is the, 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 the water harvesting uh, uh, authority. I mean, uh, I, uh, talking of the wage fee bill and uh, some of the organizations we really don't get value for money for is uh, that agency. I mean, they have been there for years. We have had uh, Budalangi uh, flooding, uh, Tana River, places that are very dry, but they get rains that can be stored and can be harvested, and they can help even in the irrigation, right. as my good friend Honorable uh, Mungatana said. Okay. So I believe that some organizations should either be done away with, or they should be empowered enough to deal with these disaster issues. Okay. And while we are looking at it as a disaster, some countries have taken advantage of uh, rains and have solved uh, uh, the issue of water uh, to, 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 to the man. And okay. I believe we need to look at it in a way that we can be able to do water harvesting, use the water during drought. Yeah. And I know that Tana River, having gone to the place, is very dry sometimes. All right.
but they are getting a lot of uh, torrential uh, rains that can be harvested and used uh, to the benefit of uh, the population. All right, gentlemen, thank you so much for making time. That's why we have to leave it for now. Honorable Danson Mungatana, Senator for Tana River, Honorable Godfrey Osozi, Senator for Vihiga, and Honorable Gitonga Mukunji, Member of Parliament Manyata, and also the Chair, Kenya Young Parliamentarians. Thank you so much for making time. Let's see if you have some feedback really quick as we wind up on this. Let's bring that up on screen and see what you're saying. And let's see what you're saying here on feedback. J.M. Soma says, unlike other professionals, the bar has been set so high for anyone to pursue medicine that doctors are assured of absorption into the government. It's the high time we review the entry grades to universities downwards for Kenya to produce adequate medics. <laughs> okay, it's interesting. I am Kakaidu, says the same people who talk about fake papers are the same who hired those with fake certificates. How ironical. The ballooning wage bill will still be there if those in government will be rewarding their family members, girlfriends with, the fame, with fake papers. Uonimoto wa karatasi. Okay. Injila Lazaro says, President should be reminded that doctors are part of national defense, especially during the plague war or chemical attacks. Their plights should be addressed with a decorum, especially during this period of uncertainty in the Middle East. Okay. Team Kenya says on strikes, let us reduce and harmonize salaries of all employees, including political class, so that we have more people earning affordable salaries. The situation currently is that we have those who feel more important than others. Frank Orinde says in this country, it only depends on which political side you belong to. In the lead up to this last election, we witnessed the same political figures in studio defend one of their own who had fake papers. And today is in office. Lack of political goodwill is the cancer. <laughs> <laughs> Bobo Tieno says doctors aren't comfortable under county governments. They want health ministry to be reverted back to the national government because they feel it will, they, they, with their profession, that's where they belong, hiding under strike since 2017. Branch MOA finally says President Ruto's statement could exacerbate tension between the government and healthcare workers. If the demands are met, it could lead to improved conditions for doctors, but might strain the national budget and create ripple effects in other sectors. All right. That's where we leave State of the Nation for now. Coming up next is Cooking Tips. Bye for now.